This is Peter Whitchurch of the Cine Sound Film Unit reporting to you on the last leg of the world's longest and toughest reliability trial. We're heading south from Darwin, south through the lonely heart of Australia. Tennant's Creek and drivers, Dr. Bewley sent her and Jack Jeffries. And Jack Davy looking tired, he's lost points and weight, but still insists on driving all the way himself. South to Alice now, the highway's perfect, on both sides are the Devil's Marbles. Giant boulders that would be a tourist attraction to rival Stonehenge, if you didn't have to drive 3,000 miles to see them. That's me in the centre of the Cine Sound crew, having what Sunday afternoon drivers would call a picnic. And that's not a town like Alice, it is Alice, almost in the centre of Australia. Here, the bitumen defence road ends. Ahead of us is 638 miles of dust. Hitting out for Kingunia across a stretch of road that's never seen a steamroller or a water cart. Drivers must average more than 40 miles an hour for 15 hours. Kingunia's a one-horse town, especially when you see it after a non-stop drive from Alice. No one was sorry to shake the dust, and I mean dust, from their feet. Casualties are mounting, broken axles, flat tyres and even damage to cars which have struck bounding kangaroos. Past Lake Hart, the only stretch of water we've seen since Darwin. Well-known driver Frank Kleinig had to change both tyres here. His car hit a three-foot drop at high speed and tyres just don't stand that sort of treatment. That flare was one we lit ourselves to take night shots. This enforced stop is a security check because we're entering the Woomera rocket range area. And then the cars are off again, into the stifling dust that rises in great, impenetrable clouds behind every competitor. Even the rivers are dry, and as for the drivers, boy, what we could do with a nice, cool beer. Well, we're on the right road anyway. That sign says, to Adelaide, but it doesn't say how tough it is to get there. A Centralian camel looks down his nose at us. Ships of the desert, they call them. Friendly Aborigines who've never seen so many cars apparently got wind of the trial by fast smoke signal, and they turned out in force, picking in his gins, dogs, spears and all. DJ Moxham of New South Wales bites through the dust. And to the dust, you can add bumps like these that MS Law's car is going over. Let me tell you, this course tests the driver as well as the car. Approaching Adelaide, there's a special and well-deserved welcome for Possum Kipling, who's one of only 11 drivers who've lost no points after driving 5,000 miles. Another with no points down is this Peugeot. Because the sponsors fear a dead heat, they decided to add a horror section to the trial route. But meanwhile, we're speeding west towards Melbourne, 464 miles in 11 hours. And despite the fact that cars arrive at night, thousands of people are there to welcome them. It's quite a reception. A 12-hour rest here, and then the last lap. Sixty-three-year-old grandmother, Mrs. Conway, is one driver they all want to see. Near Goulburn is the horror stretch. Sponsors said all cars would lose points here, and to make sure, they timed all drivers to the quarter of a second. There's Kipling about to start, only 11 miles, but what a track. It hasn't been used for normal traffic for 25 years, and here's why. It's like a golf course that's all water hazard and rough, no fairways. No wonder it's impossible to keep to schedule. And all this after more than 6,000 miles right round Australia. This test climbing, braking, acceleration, lock. Everything but the windscreen wipers and built-in ashtrays. And I can tell you from experience that it tests the padding on the seat of your pants. Come up here and sit with me and try it for yourselves. We watched while they towed the first one out, but then it was our turn to nose down into the water. Each car that makes it races for the finishing flag. Each quarter second counts one point, and yet only two points divide the first three cars. That's real driving. Now it's a clear road to Sydney. At Driver Avenue, where the trial started, tens of thousands wait to see the first cars arrive. 
As usual, the first in is the South Australian Kipling, but he lost valuable points on the horror stretch. Ahead of his time, he drives slowly through the crowded lanes of spectators to clock in at the control point right on schedule. It's taken two weeks, a fortnight of hard driving, little sleep and plenty of thrills. Victorian driver Lex Davidson, another of the 11 who lost their first points on the split-second stretch. He finished fourth, only a few points behind the winner, but he's one of the Holden team which wins the team prize. First out, last in at most control points, our own hard-working unit is there on time to catch the atmosphere of a marvellous reception. Peter Antle driving a Chrysler Plymouth, his third in the trial, two points behind the winning car. He'd been favoured to win after his great Mount Isa run. Bill McLaughlin, another favourite, who lost points because of a diverted signpost on the road to Mount Isa. His navigator, Murray Higgs, looks as fresh as when the trial began. And McLaughlin doesn't seem to have a care in the world. And here's the winner, Ken Tubman, 37, a Maitland chemist driving a Peugeot. He lost only 19 points, and the crowd of nearly a quarter of a million gives him a great reception. What a trial it's been. What a triumph for Tubman and his co-driver, John Marshall. They've won the Red X Round Australia trial and the £1,000 first prize. <laughs>